Uh, hi, I, I'm sorry. Sorry about if this computer suddenly stopped recording. I don't know why, but meh, nah, it happens. So let's just continue. Okay, we are talking about crimes, how to get rid of crimes. Uh, so, uh, how about death penalty to those people? Again, that's not going to do anything because those mass shooters mass murderer okay they they want to die so if you give them death penalty well that's what they want they don't want to live they are suicidal people mass chopping mode shooter nightclub shooter church shooter yeah they want to die that's why they do those things okay so yeah death penalty again it's not going to do anything because that's what they want they want to die they're suicidal okay Homicidal and suicidal. Okay, so uh, that was the solution. Oh yeah, <clears throat> basically torture. Okay, basically, uh, but it's not like this kind of torture. Yeah, they will have to walk in landfill and walk the trash, and they should walk with human feces. Something that smells really bad, like trash. Human feces, yeah, reclamation center, okay, so recycle, okay, in the landfill. They'll dig up the trash and yeah, recycle, pick plastic by plastic, <clears throat> uh, metal by metal, okay, and also in human waste, yeah, they will boil and churn all the human feces, urine, and kill all the germs. And then they will make manure. That's what they will be doing when under president or the criminals. Okay. And they will not stop doing that until they compensate their victims with their labor. Okay. So it's kind of like torture, basically. It's, it's about discipline, teaching them a lesson, something that they really don't want to do. We will have to make them do it if they refuse then yeah we will start to start starve them to death and we will harvest their organs okay probably they do not want to see that okay but we will have to okay then we can get rid of crimes okay that's our solution is it gonna work uh it probably will work and if it doesn't then we'll have to find another solution we we'll just not stop finding a solution okay we'll refine our solution we we'll try this experiment different solutions with prison system okay until we find until we find a solution that actually works okay and um also we will uh so these mass shooters they come come in all different age group Right, the Las Vegas shooter, he was old, he was retired, accountant, and very successful one, okay? And, but it seems most shooters tend to be young. <clears throat> the, the shooter in Texas, El Paso, Texas, like last, I, I think it was this morning, I think. I'm not sure, was it yesterday or this morning? I think it was this morning, okay? I think it like just happened, I think, like 10 o'clock in the morning in Texas time, uh, so maybe three hours ago, something like that, oh my goodness. And I think the uh, Ohio shooting, probably it happened like last night, like one o'clock in the morning in Ohio. Uh, think I'm not sure but it, they are very new so yeah um, so basically what I mean some Democrats even blame President Trump for that all this mass shooting like because uh, Dayton Ohio uh, I mean not yeah Dayton Ohio that shooting the club shooting that happened last night it was done by white female, I mean, I don't know, white male, 
Okay, so. Uh, but we don't know what what ticked him off. I mean, police. I do. Why? Mass murder is all same. It's people who hate the world, who hate people, who hate themselves, who hate their lives. So they are suicidal. They are angry at everybody. So that's mass murder. It's all the same. Okay, it's not some they blame white supremacism. I know it's not that. They don't know what they're talking about. Okay, uh, it's not white supremacism. Okay, it's those people just being losers. Okay, they hate people. They hate the world. They hate their lives. So they want to die and they want to kill as many people as possible. Okay, they are suicidal and homicidal because their life they are just unhappy. Why? Because they are losers. Why? Because they are undisciplined. Why? Because nobody disciplined them. They are weak individuals. So that's why they want to commit suicide and kill other people. Because they are, their life is a failure. That's why they are unhappy. Why did they fail in their lives? Because they are lazy. They didn't work. They didn't study. So their life turned out to be a huge failure, okay? And they are angry, jealous about other people's success. And other, other people being happy. That's why they commit mass murder like this. We know, because we are humanologists. We know things about human beings, okay? And psychologists, psychiatrists, politicians, they have no idea. They don't, okay? So, that's, that's why I'm running for president. And that's why we are doing this. To educate the public. Okay? So, what's the solution then? Ah, yeah, we need to pump in Holy Spirit using mainstream media. media okay? Meaning, importance of education. Okay? So that people love mathematics, economics. It's fun, not always, but... And it helps make people more knowledgeable it's a good hobby okay uh, some people even blame video games like violent like call of duty violent video games uh i think there's some good point there because video game yeah it tend to be violent and and also it's not i don't think it's a healthy hobby okay so yeah some republicans yeah they pointed to video games and there's some good point there because video games, yeah, it, it is bio violent and also it is unhealthy hobby. Okay? And I, I think mathematics then is better hobby. Economics, mathematics, I think it's better hobbies. Okay? Uh, because it can lead to jobs. New career. Okay? So. Um, it makes in general it makes you a more metaphysical kind of person as opposed to animalistic right so i i think yeah mathematics economics you spending here, your time with me here probably is healthier hobby than video games okay and some democrats even blame president trump for that for all these mass shootings and i don't think it's fair to blame President Trump for all these mass shootings, but what happened is he failed to prevent these mass shootings. Why? Because it's not in his agenda. What's he doing? And it's not just him. All other politicians are the same way. I mean, Democrats, do you think they are better? No, they, they are talking about climate change. And that's what, politicians are like that, they're stupid. Lead, this so-called leaders of the nation, okay? Oh, they are elites. They went to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, UPenn, Stanford, Berkeley, you name it, right? West Point, okay? Uh, but they're not interested in solving real-world problems because, first of all, they don't know how to solve it. Second of all, it's just not interesting enough for them. So what do they, all these politicians, what do they talk about? Iran, 
China, North Korea, Russia. That's what they are talking about when people are dying in America. Again, enemy is not without, enemy is within. Okay? It's not Russians, North Koreans, they are not killing Americans. Iranians, Chinese, they are not killing Americans. It's American killing Americans. Enemy is in within. So, but President Trump, yeah, he, to, to him, it's more sexier, it's sexier, it's more interesting to talk about Iran, nuclear deal, North Korea, China, tariff. It's more interesting to him because he get to travel. Okay? So yeah, these domestic issues like violence, crimes, to him it's not a very interesting topic. And also, it, it's not hurting him. He's rich. So, he doesn't go to Walmart or some... No, he has bodyguard and, I mean, secret service now because he's, pre he's the president, right? A politician, they're, they're not interested in solving those problems of crime or homelessness. They're not interested. Okay, I am. I am very interested in solving those problems. And I already presented to you solutions. We'll do it. We don't need any law passing. No, no. we are going to just do it. Okay. Because legislators, I, yeah, I'm not going to deal with them. All right. They're all idiots, okay? We'll just start doing it. There's no need to, for law to make, no. Legislation is not, never a solution, okay? Sometimes, but most likely, it's not a good solution, okay? Because, I mean, criminals, they don't care about law. You make a new law? Do you think criminals will care about new laws? No, they're lawless, outlaws. They don't care about laws. That's why they are criminals. They're very animalistic kind of people. Okay? People who are very close to animals. Because animals, that's what they do. They kill each other. Oh, yeah. Tigers, lions, yeah. So, bears. They're all the same. Yeah. They do common murders. That's something very natural. Animalistic. Even cannibalism is fairly common in nature. Okay? Yeah. So that's murder. Okay, cannibalism in the natural world. So criminals, people don't understand criminals because they see p criminals as people. Yeah, no. Then you, you'll never understand because criminals are not people. They are animals, okay? They are animalistic human beings. Uh, that's why people like Ordinary people, they never understand criminals, why, why they do it. We, do, we, are, we understand, we are humanologists, okay? So, why do animals kill other animals to feed on them? So, why do mothers kill other people? Uh, pursuit of happiness, okay? That's how they derive happiness from other people's lives. Just like animal eating other animals in order to survive. Okay, yeah, so pursuit of happiness is the reason for these criminals killing other people. Yeah, they are, that's their way of pursuing their happiness. Uh, well, it's the truth. Okay, so pursuit of happiness is not always a good thing. Right, look at gay people. That's their way, mode of pursuing their happiness. Being LGBT, gay, criminals. Yeah, killing other people, like raping women, that's their way to be happy. They are pursuing their happiness. So they are doing it in a very wrong way, though. Okay, so why do people do things? Because that's their way of being happy, <clears throat> whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay? So, and, yeah, these criminals, they're animalistic people, so that's how they derive their happiness, by killing other people, making other people suffer, okay? Why do bullies do bully, bullying? 
Yeah, it is their way of happiness, pursuing happiness at the expense of other people's. Okay, so they are stealing happiness basically. Okay, it is copium transport. All right, so yeah. Uh, so we have to raise the price of model, okay? So by making it very uh, painful for those criminals, okay? Their death penalty is not going to do anything. Why? Because these people are suicidal. They do want to die. So that's why the death penalty is not going to prevent any more mass model like this, okay? Uh, we have to make them work in human waste reclam reclamation and also in landfill okay? because that's going to teach them a lesson and they will have to do that for a very long time because they will have to compensate for every single victim that they killed probably it will be life sentence okay? if they refuse to work okay then um, we will starve them to death okay? we are not going to kill them we will keep giving them water and food so that they cleanse out their system and uh, we examine them if they are clean their body is all clean we'll give them healthy food yeah Pro maybe we'll have to make them exercise as well uh, before we starve them to death or we don't have to starve them to death we can put some chemical injection whatever whatever okay but uh, or not, no chemical injection because we, our goal is okay. This murderer refused to work in prison. Okay, then we're gonna harvest this man's organ. And so for a while, yeah, that will give them health, give him healthy, healthy food, and probably let him exercise too, because we're gonna harvest his organ. We give them water, healthy food, and let them exercise so that his organs are very healthy. After that, how do you harvest his organ? Uh, perhaps when he's conscious. Why? We don't want to inject chemicals to his body because then the organ, human organs that we're going to harvest from this murderer, mass murderer, uh, it will be polluted with this chemical. We don't want that. We want healthy organ from him. Organs, human organs, his eyes, his heart. Uh, so, I mean, but we don't want him to move around when we take out his organs, right? Probably some anesthesia, okay? Yeah, like a surgery. Anesth anesthesia. Anesth I, it's a difficult word to pronounce. Anesthesiology or something. Yeah, anesthesia, whatever. I don't even know how to pronounce that, okay? Yeah. Just like in a surgery, any surgery. Yeah, I probably will do that, okay? so. We harvest his organs. I don't think any mass murderer would welcome the, the, that idea. Okay, I don't because they hate people, right? So why would they want to donate their organs to save other people? So probably they do not want that. And then that's good because we have to do something that they really hate being done to them. Okay, that's the only way to co prevent crimes. Make the price. Of crime as a product make it expensive to them okay we should make we should do something that they really had to be done to them okay so it's like the flip side of golden rule it's kind of eye to eye kind of okay let's take a break okay so.
what we just discussed isn't really not anything new to us, but people do need to know about this. Okay, that's why I'm running for president. That's why I'm um, making these recordings. I'm doing what I can to share with the world human knowledge. Okay, uh, knowledge in general. Uh, we don't just do human knowledge here. We do mathematics, economics, linguistics. We do everything here. Okay, martial art. Dancing sometimes Maybe we should dance a little okay, because it's been a long time. I know yeah, but hey Yeah, we, we feel very sorry about the families of the victims, but hey, we we have to move on. Okay, so uh, But we will keep talking about prevention of crime. Okay, so uh, Basically uh, Criminals yeah, they're animalistic people right because they never become a human being Meaning, uh, the difference between animals and humans is this, ethics, rules, like law, okay? Do not kill, all right? So we, we just discovered something inter interesting in connection with Jesus and golden rule. Do to others as what you want others to, to your, do to you, right? Uh, but so criminals, uh, we should... Do to them once they're in prison we should do to them something that they do not want like making them work in human waste reclamation center or landfill recycling uh, nobody wants to do that so we should do make them do it otherwise uh, they will die okay in prison and will collect their organs nobody wants that we, we have to we have to do to them something that they really don't want to be done to them okay it's kind of flip side of golden rule okay like i it's kind of like eye to eye to to, to kind of concept but not exactly because we're going to recycle their body parts organ donation I, I, human organ sale because prison need to make money and human body parts are they're very very expensive so prison will make a lot of money selling these criminals body parts if they refuse to work okay that's the only way all right so what is it like slavery or is it 13th amendment violation or is it 8th amendment violation or guess what unusual and cruel punishment Maybe, but we don't care. <laughs> Why? Why? Because constitution is a man-made thing. It's, you should stop seeing U.S. constitution as some kind of Bible or religion. No, it's a law, man-made law. So if it does not serve us, we should get rid of it. Okay. Uh, we should not let constitution work against us we should make it work for us not against us we don't work for constitution no constitution work for us laws they're man-made objects so don't idolize it don't let it become a subject of idolatry be it u.s constitution statutes if this law does not work for us we should get rid of it okay and or get around it. Oh, yeah, it's not slavery. It's disciplinary measure. It's a punishment. Okay? So it's not slavery. Because if they behave very well, they become better people, then yeah, we pull them out of landfill, human reclamation center, and give them a better job in prison, okay? But they do need to uh, compensate for their victims. Okay? Unless the family of the victims of their crime kind of agree that this become this person become better people and this murderer become better person he repented yeah now he paid the price and he can get out of prison then yeah let him get out of prison after he become a better person but if victims family they disagree with the parole board then yeah this person will stay until he dies in, in prison something like that so we have to experiment different solutions uh, and make it work for us and, and we should not worry about constitution, okay? So, uh, 
uh, we just should work out of solution and don't care about anything else okay because law constitution statutes they are tools they are supposed to help us not against us they, they are not supposed to work against us laws they are tools man-made tools okay laws exist for us we don't exist for laws constitution exists for us we don't exist for constitution okay so they are our constitution laws they are not our masters they are our servants you need to know this okay so yeah um yeah i'm kind of brainy kind of guy okay so yeah i'm very well educated um and i'm fairly smart too okay so i should be the president okay not that those politicians okay they they don't know what they're doing okay they just want to travel <laughs> fly here fly there that's what they want to do that's why they became politicians it's their retirement job and even if they have good heart they want to help our people they can't why because they don't know okay there you know it they may be to west point harvard yale it does not make them any smarter okay I should be the president next, next like 2020 November, okay? So, uh, I hope you do vote for me, okay? Then, yeah, I will save the world. It won't be me. I will lead the effort of salvation of the world because I have all the solutions. Who's going to implement it? Everyone, okay? So, basically, the mass shooters, okay, they are unhappy people, right? So, we should make <clears throat> the world happy. It's happiness class. How to be happy? If everybody's happy, then murder will cease to exist. Okay? So, then how do you become happy? Yeah, exercise and diet. It is. <laughs> That's the key to happiness and health. Yeah, I look at the photos of those two mass shooters who killed many, many people, dozens of people yesterday and this morning, I think. <clears throat> they look very unhealthy people, okay? So looks like, it doesn't look like they <clears throat> practice regular exercise and healthy diet, okay? And the guy who uh, did the mass murdering in Walmart in El Paso, Texas, <clears throat> People say he's a white supremacist. So I look, looked at his photo and he doesn't even look white. Yeah, the Dayton, Ohio guy, he, he is a white guy in his 20s. But this guy in Texas, mass shooter, he looked more like a Middle Eastern or Arabic to me. Or Middle Eastern descent or he even looked Hispanic to me. He doesn't look white at all. Okay. Most likely Middle Eastern descent. Okay. But neither of them look healthy. I mean, just by looking at their photos, they don't seem to be athletic. And they don't seem to exercise. They don't seem to diet. Okay, so yeah. Diet and exercise, okay? So it's that simple. Okay, just everybody needs to do it. And education too. They need to have a good career, okay? Uh, yeah, mathematics. But it's not require that everybody study mathematics I, it'd be nice <clears throat> because if you are a carpenter plumber nowadays being a plumber is like being an engineer it's hvac system and you do need to learn mathematics basic arithmetic of course no matter what job you get if you're a cashier yeah doing numbers it helps you to count better okay so basic arithmetic is no matter what job you get <clears throat> it helps okay so it's about discipline okay so again diet and exercise and studying okay that's what's gonna make you happy so it yeah it all boils down to education okay 
that's what it is. I mean, yeah. So we should make America a study. Okay. So that's key to happiness, education. Could they get a better job, higher paying job after you after they have education, right? They be making more money. They do diet, exercise, martial art, dancing. And also they should learn to drink properly, safely, like I do, okay? And also smoking cigarette is fine, and I mean, unless you are pregnant, then you shouldn't drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes, oh no. And you shouldn't smoke marijuana either. Marijuana is bad, okay, so don't do marijuana, <clears throat> alcohol, cigarette is fine, okay? Not because I do those things, but rather I do those things because th those are the right thing to do. And I recommend you do the same. Okay? Unless you are pregnant, then, then you shouldn't do alcohol and tobacco. But I do it, I, could, I do I go tobacco in a very safe manner. Cigarette, how many cigarettes? one or two cigarettes because I go take a cigarette break right how I have like two or three pops it's time so one cigarette it lasts quite for quite a while because I only smoke small part of that at a time okay I call I, I drink alcohol only at home if I drink alcohol outside yeah then I take long time to sober up by eating food drinking water for a long time like hours okay yeah yeah I don't drink and drive okay so um, uh, so that's that okay so all boiled down to discipline so that's why I, I have to be the president okay because I know these things and I know how to discipline people. I know it very well. Okay. So we have to pump in this Holy Spirit, the knowledge of human knowledge, okay, to the rest of the world. Then violence will cease to exist. Okay. It's about discipline. Okay. It's, it, that's all it is. It's about uh, making people work, study. So that they work and study so that they become more successful person that's the only way to be happy that's the key to happiness so it's labor my new plusism plum pluminosism right it's work and reward you work is painful but you will reap the fruit of your labor that's happiness there is no magic to it it's that simple key to happiness is very simple it's about work it's like they're everywhere okay how how can you be beautiful oh exercise diet that's work pain voluntary suffering of healthy good pain good labor diet exercise also, yeah, I shop, nice clothing, wash, Monday to Friday at least, okay? Because on weekends, I, I don't wash, okay? I wash my face, but I don't take a bath during weekends. Only Monday to Friday in the morning before I go to work, I take a bath. And yeah, do, do my hair, yeah, labor, all right? That's it, okay? So yeah, you become a beautiful person, you make other people happy, you are happy because you are beautiful. Diet, exercise, washing. So you are happy, you make other people happy, everybody's happy. And you study, you work, you make money, 
you have a career, you make more money in the future because your career progresses, then you are happy. Then why do some people not do that? Uh, because they didn't have good parents who teach all these wonderful things. They didn't have good mentors. They didn't have good teachers. So let me pre play that role. Let me share with the rest of the world. We are forced to America. America forced. Yes. Because other countries, well, they will follow our suit. They will follow the suit. Okay, they will follow us. So for, we will focus on educating Americans. And then the wor words will spread to the rest of the world. Okay, we just need to focus on America. Saving America. Okay. Then the rest of the world will follow us. They will imitate us. They will learn from us. But we will only focus on America. Okay? Because when I'm the president, I'm president of America, not the world. I'm not going to talk to uh, any foreigners, okay? It's their problem, okay? International trade? Yeah, let business people take care of international business. There won't be any international politics, not, not, not when I'm the president, okay? We'll focus solely on America, okay? I'm not going to talk to some prime ministers or I'm not going to go to their freaking stupid meetings, no. Because I will be working only eight hours a week. Uh, not, not eight hours a week. Eight hours a day. Monday to Friday. I will not work more than that as the president. Okay? And my yearly salary level will be about... It will be annually adjusted to average American salary level. What do I do with the rest of the money? Uh, we have some programs, okay, so, yeah, to get rid of crimes. We do a lot of experiments, okay, so, uh, how about economy? Yeah, probably I do the same thing, right? I just keep sharing with you ideas. Yeah, product, brand new product innovation ideas and and leave it to the business okay so business people because yeah it's their job my job will be getting rid of crimes okay so that will be my number one priority we get rid of crime and we'll build a southern Buddha world too and we also stop so that yeah in South America so that they can have their jobs in their countries we will outsource all the manufacturing jobs back to Latin America. That is something that, yeah, I will reverse President, President Trump's policy. They need to be reversed. Outsourcing is a good thing. And we get rid of all those Trumpian tariffs too. Okay. The, those two things, tariff and anti-outsourcing, I will reverse that. Okay. They, they need to be reversed. But border wall, that's a good idea. That's something I agree with President Trump. Actually, that's something I learned from him I, because I didn't think of that. So he got some good ideas. He does. Okay, so border wall, yeah, we'll build it. Okay. Yeah, I, I do need to be the president, okay? I do. Um, because I'm the only one who can, put a, who can put a stop on all this. Mass shootings. Can I prevent it? Yes. I will get rid of crimes, okay? I told you. I, we, I, I sh shared it with you. Yeah, we know how to do it. Now, we'll use U.S. military. Okay. I think they're just sitting there doing nothing, okay? Just waiting taxpayers' money. Oh, this, all this training. Okay, let's put them into use. They know how to shoot a gun. They have gun. They have body armor. They have Kevlar. They have Humvees. It's just sitting there doing nothing. In the army, U.S. Army uh, bases. We'll use it. Well, is it going to be martial law? No. 
no, there will be no like. No, it won't be martial law. It may look like martial law, but we won't call it at that. No. Will there be like what checkpoint? No, military checkpoint. No. no. Will Will there be like what? At night, was that cut cut off? You know. I always forget that word. You know, like 10 o'clock, you have to go home, that kind of stuff. 10 o'clock at night, you have to come home, you have to go home. We won't do that, no. Fuck no. No. Then what I, what am I going to do with the military people? Oh, we'll use them. They'll be assisting the police. Okay. Um, we give them some authority. Military people, yeah. They will be assisting the police. Because they have superior machinery, machine gun, they have bulletproof Humvee. Humvees? Many Humvees that I used to drive when I was in the US Army. It has bulletproof windows. It's like three inches thick. It is, it's a very, very bulletproof kind of window. Bulletproof glass. It's like three inches thick thick is I'm not kidding okay and they have all that stuff let's use it I mean, taxpayers they paid a lot of money to these contractors you know these military contractors make all these Humvees and Kevlar bulletproof vest US Army soldiers they have that everyone have that in the US Army they have M16 the Humvees will use it uh, and we'll get rid of crimes. Okay, they will work with the local police because police they are very good at what they do. It's just we don't have enough police. We have U.S. military with weapons. It's all paid by taxpayers, Americans. So it's now time to harvest the fruit of their investment in U.S. military. We have wonderful men and women in the U.S. military. We have Marine. Army, Air Force, Coastal Guards, Navy, they all know how to use weapon. Okay, this is part of their training. And they were trained with taxpayers' money. It's now time to harvest the fruit of American taxpayers' investment. American people should benefit from all this investment in US military. And we have it. Now let's use it to get rid of crimes in America. They will work with local police officers and we get rid of homelessness too we put them all in jail okay and we're gonna call it 101 back to the basics okay yeah improvement institute of in improvement we put them all in jail and they will be doing recycling in the trash landfill and so we are saving the environment too, okay? You they are all recyclable if you separate them, okay? So yeah, they'll be working in landfill and uh, human waste reclamation, okay? So because we're gonna make them into manure. We recycle those things. It's very pro-environment kind of thing. So I probably get a lot of Democrats votes Okay, because I'm very liberal. Okay, I'm pro-abortion. I don't call it pro-choice. I call it pro-abortion. Okay, so yeah, very liberal. Okay, but I am against gay marriage, though. Okay, oops. I'm against tattoo piercing too. I'm against sugar fat too. Obviously, I'm very, very much against those things. Okay, and I'm not gonna hide that. So, so much for the presidency, right? Uh, I don't care. Um, and also, I'm against ultra-interracialism. Okay, so 
Yeah. And people are not going to know what it is unless I explain to them. Because we coined that term. Okay, it's come. Kind of, it's new new word. Anti ultra internationalism. It's kind of interesting. What? Uh, we we'll keep we continue with economics. Okay, because we talked enough about prevention of crime. Okay, anti criminalism. We talked enough about that. So we spent almost an hour. But it's worthwhile to talk about. Okay, so it's nothing new. None of these things is new to us. We talked about this before. It's just that uh, this two horrendous mass shootings happened like yesterday so and this morning. So yeah, we just reviewed that concept, but it's nothing new to us though. We talked about this for a long while by now. Uh, It's sad, all this mass shooting is sad and it's, I'm still recovering from the shock. It is shocking, I was stunned. Two mass shootings this weekend, one in Texas, one in Ohio and then a couple of days ago there was this shooting in, a, in California, it was garlic festival. I mean, I love garlic, okay? So garlic festival, that sounds really cool. And there was mass shooting there. It's just... It's sad and it's shocking, it is. I'm still recovering from it, okay? I was stunned, all right? Too many mass shooting back to back. So some Democrats say pre it's President Trump's fault. I, I have to disagree. I mean, he I don't think he call, he's causing this, okay? But he fails to prevent it because he's not working on it. And again, that's not his fault either because he doesn't have any solution. It's not his fault that he's ignorant. Because nobody knows about this solution except for us. That's why I'm running for president. Because I'm the only one who knows the solution. And, and maybe some of you. Because if you have been watching this. Okay. Um, I'm doing what I can. I mean, in my locality. Yeah, we do have crimes. But. I'm trying to prevent that actually. Why? How? I interact with locals, okay? I run in public so that they see me running. It's an education, okay? And I go to bars and clubs sometimes to sing and dance. That's important because people need to be happy. They should learn to dance, learn to sing. Happiness is important, okay? That's what prevents crime. Okay? And I put on nice clothing and I go to Walmart. Okay? It's very important, those things. Be stylish, fashionable. You may think that's not important, but it is very important because people need to be happy. People learn to, people should learn how to be happy, how to be beautiful. Exercise, diet, fashion, those are important things to be happy, to be beautiful, okay? Those are, ve and dancing, martial art, singing, it's, those are things that makes me happy. So I don't commit any crimes. It's very important, those little things in life. That's what make people, that's what can make people happy. 
so that they don't commit crimes. Okay? You should learn to you should learn to be happy. You should learn how to be happy. It's those things, good healthy habits. Okay? Uh, those are the things that can prevent crimes. All right? So I'm educating my locals, my neighbors by showing by leading by example. They see me, right? And yeah. I'm doing anything I, everything I can to educate people. Okay? <laughs> All right. So. If I'm the president, I will educate the world. Okay? So, yeah, I can save the world. The entire world. I can I can re get rid of crimes, violence in the world by just letting them watch me. I will lead by example, okay? Because that has been the sole focus in my life, my sole priority. How to be a perfect human being. How to live, how to build a perfect character, perfect knowledge. I'm still working on it. I'm not saying I'm perfect now, but at least I have a good attitude. I'm trying to be a perfect, a better, bigger and better human being, okay? And the world can learn from me because I, I learned from the world, good people, my mentors, my teachers, my parents, grandparents, my friends, my colleagues. They taught me and I absorbed it. It was an uphill battle, okay? So I'm not like some of those people who absorb bad stuff like tattoos, piercings, obesity, those are bad stuff to absorb. But nowadays, people, young people, also even old people too, they absorb those toxic ideologies like sponge. <laughs> Me, I'm more uphill battle kind of guy. I want to do the right thing. I want to know good knowledge. So I learn, everything I know, I learn from other people. It's not from me, it's from other people. It's not directly from God, no. <clears throat> People told me, pastors, my pastors, <coughs> pastors in the, in the radio, yeah, I learn from them, my preachers, pastors, yeah, reverends, I learn from them, okay? <coughs> okay, we'll take a break, okay? So, now it's kind of, kind of getting hot. So, I, I learn from people. I'm 41 years old, so now it's time for me to teach and what I have learned from people because I'm about that age, I'm 41 years old, so that's what I'll be doing as the president, okay, so. <coughs> Take five, okay.
Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, again, I'm running for president. I'm doing everything I can. If I don't become the president, well, that's fine too. Why? I keep learning mathematics, science, foreign languages. I'm, a, I'm a, then I'm happy camper. Okay, all I need is a job, good job, that pays them, I pays my bill. Then I'm a happy camper. Okay, because I'm, I'm a happy, totally, perfectly happy person. <clears throat> so yeah, that's why I don't commit any crimes. I don't com get into any trouble, because I'm, I'm a happy individual. Okay. Yeah, I love, I enjoy learning foreign languages, mathematics, also making one. <laughs> yeah, I'm a happy camper. If I, as long as I, I have a job, I, yeah, I'm a happy camper. Okay, so, because I have good hobbies that makes me really happy. Okay. So yeah, it's not necessary for me to become the president because without being the president, I'm very happy person. Okay. But I'm running in order to make people happy and get rid of crimes. That's why I'm running. Okay. As a service. All right. I'm very rich in knowledge. Okay. I know a lot of things because that has been my sole focus in my life. Okay. It wasn't about money. It was about knowledge. Okay. So... Uh, okay, so hopefully God made me the president in 2021, January, uh, yeah, please pray for me, okay, I, I pray for myself, and I, I pray for you, too, uh, so that you become bigger and better person, okay, yeah, let God bless you, and let you be healthy and happy and prosper, thrive, successful. In Jesus, Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Okay, so I just prayed for you. All right, so. Okay. All right. Now let's get back to math, math, uh, uh, economics. All right. So we did some differentiation. Very something very basic. Okay. So uh, we found something interesting. Um, we call it. Half theorem. Okay, so the maximization of this area <coughs> happens half halfway, half point of this x intersection. Okay, so no, it doesn't depend on b. It, um, it, that was kind of interesting. Okay, it does not depend on the slope when the this curve is like that straight curve straight line then the maximize the uh, area of this rectangle get maximized in the middle point on the x-axis okay so that's that um hopefully this middle point is right side of this cost <laughs> okay anyways so because forget about the cost I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry uh, I'm sorry my bad forget about the cost all right think only about you know uh i'm gonna bring this closer okay so because i kind of want to be at the center of the screen okay so because if i'm on, on the side of the screen then i tend to do this and it hurts my neck okay it's not like i i'm so, have big ego I, oh i want to be at the center of this camera this screen no it's not that try to protect my neck I, I don't want to do this, okay? All right, much better now. So, uh, it's too close. Go away. Move over. 
I don't go away, just scoot over. Forget about the cost, okay? So I'm gonna even erase this, okay? Forget about the cost. We'll think about that later, okay? The, so, you have this pasta, given your present business reputation, this is the curve. It's both supply and demand curve, okay? Uh, as you raise the price, less and less people will come, so you will make less and less pasta because you don't want to overproduce because it goes to waste, right? As you decrease the price, more and more people will come. And, uh, but does that necessarily mean uh, you will make more pasta? No, you don't have to. It's a free country, isn't it? There's no law that says, oh, you, you shall produce more pasta if more people want it. That's like city ordinance. No, there's no law such a such a law, right? So it's a free country, okay? So you may impose that rule as a boss to your employees, right? But it's up to you. You're the boss, okay? So yeah, you may uh, experiment with price because you are the boss of this pasta restaurant. Pizza, pizza, pa healthy pizza, okay? No cheese pizza, okay? We just use pasta, okay? So easier to pronounce too. Pasta, okay? Healthy pasta, no cheese in there. No sugar, no cheese, no oil, no fat. Zero fat, zero sugar. Pasta, okay? Plenty of good healthy lean meat and uh, hell good vegetables okay a lot of all ball spices so it's fantastic pasta all right so and you experiment with the price you raise the price you notice that less people come you reduce the price you realize that more people come okay Does this make sense to you? Is, is it a good model or not? So this one particular curve uh, corresponds to popularity. If your pasta become more popular, then what happens? Uh, given the same price, more people will come. Okay. So, I think this is how we approached, way, way, way back, way back. Something like that, okay? We can make some minor tweak later, okay? Something like that, sure. As your pasta business become more well known, your business reputation as it increases, because words of mouth, so more people come to your pasta. It's not just human being; animals do that too. They find some source of food, they communicate to other their colleagues, and they bring their friends. To this place where there are a lot of food animals do that all the time right you feed one raccoon or one duck mallard next day they bring their friends right probably by smell okay so you give food to this ducky mallard in your pool, right? So, Mallard eats this piece of bread, whatever, and it goes home, and other dogs, they smell this. <laughs> hmm, I smell some bread on you. Where did you get it? 
I'm not going to tell you. Well, we'll follow you. Can. So t tomorrow, the next day, yeah, there are this hundred of this wild donkeys in your pool. I've seen that photo, okay? So it was fun. Or raccoon, okay? You feed one animal, yeah, next day, there are like a dozen of them, right? They bring their friends, okay, so. All right. I never fed a moose, and I won't, because it's kind of illegal here. But some people do, okay. Uh, yeah. I don't feed wild animals, okay, but some people do. Okay, so you, you, you're, this is pop, increased popularity, business reputation, okay, so I, I guess we can call it reputation curve, whatever, transactional demand curve, whatever, okay, so increased reputation, okay, so Given the same price, more people will want it. But, you, two choices, right? You can increase the production level. I want some lighter color, so. You may choose to work more hours or hire more people so you end up making more pasta, but you do not want to in increase the price, okay? Because you're kind of liberal, democratic, kind of liberal, like not communist, but you love feeding the poor people. You love the fact that poor people can come and eat your pasta. So you don't want to increase price. Then also, again, maybe it's wrong to say this is brand new reputation. Because that reputation is kind of a bit independent in a sense where you may decide to not do nothing. You don't, you're not going to work more hours. You're not going to raise the price. You're not going to hire more people. It's business as usual. So what, do, what happens then? People wait in line and many of them go empty-handed. Okay, so yeah, some restaurants do that. Every city, big city, had at least one restaurant like that. They don't franchise. They just wait people, let people wait long line. Some restaurants do that. Okay, they are not hiring more people. They are not doing building more buildings. It's, but it's very famous restaurant, so people wait in line for hours and hours. I have done that before. Yeah. Was it Pinkies, the hot dog in Los Angeles? Yeah, just as for a Los Angeles experience, yeah. But I waited for like an hour for this. It was good hot dog. They lived up to their reputation. It was fantastic hot dog. Okay. Yeah, so some restaurants do that, right? They don't raise the price. They don't hire more people. No, they just business as usual and let people wait for hours outside some restaurants do that every big city have at least one of those things those restaurants right they just do nothing okay so they stay in the same car not no increase in price no increase in production business as usual but the, their reputation increased so yeah it's wrong to say uh, this is better reputation because you can stay in the same car and have better reputation. Then people end up waiting longer and longer hours to have your pasta. In a sense, price increases in terms of their time, customers' time of waiting. Okay, so, but yeah, time is money, sure. Copy on, right? But uh it's the same curve okay there's no increase in 
the dollar price. This increase in time price, your customer has to pay with their time because line is longer. But there's no increase in dollar price and there's no increase in uh, production level. Okay? So you as a business owner is selling the same quantity of pasta, making exactly the same money. Okay? But now that your business reputation has increased, you can make more money. Two ways, right? Yeah, by hiring more people, keep the price the same. Hiring more people, okay? Or you can increase the price and but uh, I want more color. You can increase the price. Okay. Uh, the revenue used to be this. Don't don't care about cost yet. Okay, just care only about money that comes in. Okay, so it used to be what your pasta used to, you, was used to be ten dollars. Now you increase the price to twelve dollars, or <clears throat> so you you are making this much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So there was original revenue, right? Number of, of price that you sell multiply by price, ten dollars. Okay. You can increase the price and make more money. This much money, more money. So blue plus green. Okay. So that's your new revenue. Okay. Thanks to the uh, increase in your re business reputation, popularity, okay? Now, uh, but if you are like liberal, you know, charitable, and you don't want to be elitist, <coughs> uh, then you may hire more people and increase the production level because you don't want to work more hours, right? And make this much more uh, profit, okay? So two ways. Uh -huh. Or you can do both, a little bit of both, and do diagonal. Okay, you increase the price and you hire more people, but not too many more people. Okay, increase the price a little bit, hire just one more person. Okay, so yeah, then you can do diagonal way. Okay, then it will be like like this, and you have. Oh, three ways, right? But uh, yeah, you get to make your rectangle bigger. This area of this rectangle is re your revenue. Okay. So Alfred Marshall, okay, uh, I mean, he tried, right? I did learn his theory. I took mac microeconomics class. The only economics class I have ever taken. And uh, he did make some contribution because, yeah, at least he tried, and but his theory was wrong. But there's some good points there, okay? So yeah, introducing uh, this Cartesian, you know, analytical geometry, you know, this Cartesian geometry. What is it? Algebraic geometry? I don't know. Yeah, this Cartesian coordinate, this kind of analytical method, introducing that to economics, that's a contribution. Okay, because I'm kind of doing something very similar. It just it's a bad happen to be okay. Let's say it's an improvement from Alfred Marshall's model. Okay, uh, but uh, it's just better model than Alfred Marshall's supply and demand curve because it's a wrong model. Okay, but his at least he tried, and I did learn his theory, and so uh, but I just made it. His approach, okay, this quantity and price, money, x, y axis, that kind of stuff, okay. Uh, 
supply and demand curve yeah so it it does have some good points okay it, this assignment of quantity and price uh, that's his contribution okay for supply curve demand curve is a wrong model okay we have to abandon that you should okay we should do this instead right because not because it came it came from me no i'm i'm just a discoverer of this messenger okay but it's up to you okay you don't you don't have to accept this okay it's not religion it's not like you have to believe in this no just understand if it makes sense to you uh, then you can adopt this if you think this is wrong yeah then reject it it's free country man okay so i won't be offended no yeah go ahead keep doing alfred marshall yeah no problem okay it's up to you it's free country okay all right this may die with me but so be it i don't care really okay so i'm having a lot of fun doing this so yeah my movie all this economic theory mathematics you can die with me that's fine with me that's fine by me so again even if your business increases in reputation popularity you don't have to make any changes it's up to you it's a free country okay many restaurants they are like that they just let customers wait uh, for hours yeah many restaurants are like that family business yeah so yeah you don't have to move to the brand new transaction curve we call it transaction curve it's because it's both supply and demand curve okay so transaction curve okay so and we call it transaction demand theory but it's a transaction curve because it's also supply curve too okay uh So yeah, but here you are reacting, responding to increased demand because if you are not like this guy, so let's say two kinds of people, okay, or three kinds of people. First kind, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my pasta business is doing better than before. My pasta is more popular, more people want it, but I'm not making any changes. I don't want to hire more people. I don't want to increase the price. Every business as usual. One that's like a popularity increased, but you don't change any annual, annual price or production everything stays the same then what happens yeah people wait longer okay that's scenario number one second scenario you hire more people but no no change in your price so this increased increase the production and you make more money you create a new job you make more money more people are eating your pasta so increase increased demand you meet with increased supply to match that demand that's why supply and demand is same curve okay it's same thing you respond to increased demand more people want your pasta so you respond to it by increasing uh, production level increasing supply you hire people or you may decide to work more hours but i don't recommend that as a humanologist I recommend you to hire more people. Yeah, create jobs, but don't work more hours. So I want you to do hobbies, exercise, martial art. I want you to do other things than work. Don't be workaholic. Okay? You may not bring in more money to yourself because you're hiring people and you're paying your employee which is fine 
right? Because you're creating jobs, which is great, okay? That's scenario number two. Scenario number three. So scenario zero, no change. Scenario number one, increased, in, in, increased production. Scenario, scenario number three, increased price. You just, it's kind of lazy man solution, right? All you do is white out the price of this product in the menu. Or, for, or if you go digital, just get rid of all the old menu and just print brand new menu. You might, in Microsoft Word, you just change price from $10 to $12. And you print it out. Here, here's the new menu, okay? So that's the only thing that you change. You don't change ingredient. No. You don't hire more people. No. You just change the price. Now, you're making more money. The number of people, let's say this is what? 10 people, okay? Yeah, the same 10 people come. But they are richer people though. So now the character of your restaurant changed a little bit. It's now it has become more elitist, more upper classy kind of because now only rich people can come to your restaurant and eat your pasta because it's kind of expensive now. Okay, but it's same ten number of people, but they're different kind now. They are more elitist. They're richer people. Okay, if you're okay with that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, yeah, your, your pasta kind of become more like of a luxury, luxury. Okay, boutique, luxury. Same 10 people, you only get to make, you only need to make 10 pasta per day, but you are making a lot more money. Thanks to the popularity of this pasta. But you, if you are scenario number two, category two, kind of person, maybe you don't like that because it's like betraying, like biting the feeding hand, betraying your own parents because these poor people, they are the one you, who made your pasta famous and now you are turning your back on them, right? Just like President Trump or any president, any politicians, right? Yeah, after they get elected, they forget about us, the rest of, rest of us. Politicians are like that, okay? So they forget about us, right? So that's why maybe you want to do this number two option. I probably it's better off, okay? Ethically speaking, in terms of morality, yeah, you don't want to turn back on, turn your back. You want to betray those poor people who came to your pastime, spread the words, made your, who made your pasta famous, okay? If you do, if you take this number three way, then you're increasing the pasta and those poor people who wants, who made your pasta business more successful now, you're betraying them. It's kind of unethical, like, you know, biting the feeding hand kind of, kind of betrayal. Okay, so, uh, so because you're displaced, replacing those poor people with rich people. Okay, so it's kind of betrayal kind of, and you're not, you're not creating any jobs either. Okay, it's just you work the same hours, you make more money. Okay, it's kind of unethical, right? So, I would recommend you take this number two option where you hire people, you work the same hours, you create the jobs, you're feeding more people, you're passing on your knowledge by having this apprentice, yeah, your assistant cook. Okay. You're feeding more people. You created a brand new job. You're paying him. You may not bring in more money to yourself, but you are making this, this new employee work. You're educating him how to make wonderful pasta, healthy pasta, and you're feeding more people. That would be my recommendation. I think that's good for your community's 
economy in general because more people more people are being fed more people are working you may not be making more money though but that's fine because you are not working more hours okay so that's what I would recommend because but here in number three option you are making more money <laughs> to yourself because you are not working more hours uh, you are not hiring anybody you just increase the price same number of people are coming to your restaurant you are making more money uh, but probably it's better to take this number two option number one option that's the worst you're wasting people's time waiting in line for this freaking pasta number one, option number one probably that's the worst because you are wasting people's time okay again you can do go diagonal okay increase the price a little bit instead of hiring two people hiring just one more person okay just a little bit of increase in production a little bit of increase in price yeah you can do that okay <clears throat> which course of action maximizes the profit probably let me call it option number four diagonal movement okay let's draw it okay diagonal move, movement probably that's the profit maximization maximizing point why mm -hmm. because i think it tend to be the middle point okay so you want to get to as middle point as possible as close to the mi middle point as possible okay because that's where the area is maximized the revenue okay so uh probably that's how you if you want to maximize your profit probably that's the way to go okay that would be my guess all right so of course it depends on the slope though actually it doesn't we just prove that half middle point we, co we call it a middle point theorem we proved it okay so it doesn't depend on the slope okay it's always the middle point okay then this is the profit maximization point uh, because right here we have middle point right and it moved up right so you have brand new middle point and that's when uh, you increase both price and labor production okay so good we didn't do this last time we did the uh, transaction de demand theory I mean because we have done a lot of mathematics between that time and now so we are better at mathematics we developed this hobby of proving things and making into a theorem I mean it's kind of new to us right because I started reading I mean, at least looking at some mathematical journal articles so in the internet in my cell phone okay so that's holy spirit of proofism in mathematics yeah let's prove things so this holy spirit jumped at me and it came to me and it now it lives in me proofism ideology of proving mathematically now it became one with me okay this holy spirit of proofism is a good ideology mathematical proofism it jumped out of the cell phone from this academic mathematical journal paper and it came to me and it possessed me now i'm one with this holy spirit proofism Yeah, it sounds creepy, right? But this is one way to look at it. It's a language. Christianity, Christian language. 
possessed by the Holy Spirit. It's good. It's better than being possessed by Satan. Yeah, it's better than becoming a gay guy or tattooed, pierced, or obese, sugar fetishism. I look at President Trump, he's sugar fetist, right? He's obese because he eats all the sugar and fat. He's ice cream, pies, cakes, cheese, pizza. Yeah, he has this pot belly, you know, like as if he's some pregnant woman. Pot belly, he's an obese, fat man, President Trump, right? He doesn't do tobacco, he doesn't do alcohol, but he does sugar and fat. Look at him and look at me. I don't do sugar and fat. Every once in a while I do, okay? But mostly on a regular basis, I do tobacco and alcohol instead. So anti-alcohol tobaccoism uh, is an is a evil ideology, okay? So, I mean, you don't want to do too much alcohol and too much cigarette, okay? And you don't want to drink and drive. That's bad. That's evil. You don't want to smoke cigarettes too much. That's evil too. Because it can kill you. Okay? Uh, but moderate smoking cigarettes, moderate drinking alcohol, and drinking alcohol at home, drinking safely, uh, that's Holy Spirit. Okay? What's bad is, yeah, you don't want to be abusive after you drink. Maybe I, I was kind of, I used to be like that. Verbally, verbally abusive. But I stopped doing that, okay, because my friends, they corrected me, okay, so. I listen, okay. I'm not a perfect human being, no. But I want to be a better person. I listen to people. When they correct me, I listen. Okay? It will be like that all the way until I die. Because we human beings, there's always more room for improvement. Right? Yeah. But we just need to have a good attitude. Good policy, personal policy, that we do our best to become a bigger and better person. A richer person too, yeah. Do I want to make more money? Yes. Okay. It's just not my focus, okay? So I just need a job to pay my bills. But do I want to make more and more money? Yes, I do. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? It's just that uh, it should not be your main high, high priority, main focus. Okay. So. Even if you're a businessman, okay? You want to make a good product, okay? But your focus should not be money. It's about serving the community by making this be better product, create jobs, yeah, make a better product to serve your customers. That should be your focus, as opposed to money, okay? But if you make more better products, yeah, you'll make more money, okay? But just let it come to you. Don't go after money. Go after better goods and services, okay? Then you'll make more money indirectly, but money shouldn't be your goal, okay? So. All right, let's take a break, okay? We'll continue with this. Yeah. Uh, isn't it interesting? I, I like, I like, oh, shit. I like this. It's very interesting. Revisit in economics. Yeah, I'm having a good time. This happened to be very heavy, the heaviest whiteboard, okay? Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I quote it, so. No harm done. Take five, okay?
Well, I got some for you. It's edible mushroom. It's a puffball. Okay. Puffballs are, I mean, not all of them. But I know this puffball. Okay. It's edible. Okay. When it's young. I ate one. Oh, you, it's delicious. Of course, I'll put it in the vodka. Okay. Puff, edible puffball. Okay. Yeah, I know this kind. So it's long from my friends, Alaskan friends. Okay, because I didn't know it was edible. Okay, so they told me. All right. So yeah, this particular kind is edible. Okay, I just picked it from your side yard. I didn't know it was there. But yeah, last year, uh, yeah, but t this morning I didn't know it was there. It grows on the ground. So and oh, they're delicious. So cute. They're delicious too. Some puff, puff balls are pretty big, but this one's small. Okay. Uh, so, I better write this down, right? Uh, we call it Middle point theorem, okay? So revenue is maximized, thus the profit too. Profit is maximized when um, in the middle point, okay? So this is the maximum price where the one person in your community or in the world is willing to buy this pasta. Hundred, this is uh, $20 per pasta, okay? then only one person in your community will buy this, okay? So, you put the price at $10, okay, that's the maximization point. It does not depend on the slope, okay? There was a little bit of a surprise to me, okay? But we proved it, okay? B, it, they cancel out, okay? So, yeah, I, I need to write this down. Puff wall vodka, okay. Oh. It is very good. It's yummy, by the way. Puff wall, yeah, very yummy. Yeah, you can eat, eat it raw. This kind of puff wall, okay. I don't know if there's any poisonous puff wall or not. I don't know, okay. But uh, I know this kind is edible. Okay, so I ate one and oh, it's delicious. The one in my yard is very small, but some puff balls are really big. Like right? I've seen in the pictures. Okay. They are edible when they are young. Okay, so all right. So. Let's say this 10, when it used to be, right? Let's say they, it used to be uh, the, maximization point. Forget about the cost, okay? We, we, we can say cost is $8 instead of $10. Okay, $10 is profit maximization point because the maximum, uh, this upper limit is uh, 20. Now it is 22, so profit, brand new prospect maximization point is 11, okay? When the price is $11, you maximize your profit, your revenue, okay? Okay? <clears throat> Good. Because you increase both price and the products and level, okay? So kind of middle of the way. So it does make intuitive sense, <coughs> ethically, morally, philosophically. Yeah, middle of the road, right? You increase the price a little bit, okay? And also, you're not being too nice by hiring two people. No. You deserve some money after all these years of pasta business, right? So yeah, you increase price a little bit. You hire one more people, just one person instead of two people. You don't want to be too nice, okay? So, yeah, you deserve some money. To yourself right okay so 
so middle of the road okay you serving the community and you're serving yourself too half and half okay. hey come on it's just one dollar increase hello hopefully your patrons they hopefully make more money than before just like you do hopefully your customers make more money because they their progress in their career maybe yeah it's, it's reasonable expectation so you're not necessarily replacing your old timer customers because hopefully they are making more money too okay so you're not replacing any of your customers hopefully okay if they are still making the same money well then let it be the punishment a gold stick because now they cannot no longer afford your pasta because it's eleven dollars as opposed to ten dollars like it used to be so, so if they are making the same money if they, they're not making any more money now than years years ago then let it be let them learn a lesson I'm punishing you for not making more money than years ago so you better make some career progress and make more money now then if you make more money then yeah you can come to my restaurant and because you'll be able to afford my pasta which is one dollar more expensive so you can encourage them to work harder to make more money so their education okay so yeah okay so yeah it serves all different purposes okay you're rewarding yourself with one more money you're hiring one more person you're educating your disciplining your customers so that uh, they make more money okay yeah so sort of like triple purpose right here okay yeah and you maximize your profit this way as well okay mathematically good very good it's a good economic theory very good economic theory okay so and it is realistic though it is realistic realistic as well okay unlike the supply and demand curve because it's kind of shady you know they make some far-fetched assumption right so yeah this one works better okay let me write this down okay because uh, yeah we'll just stick with old name transactional demand theory okay um but we just proved uh, something new uh middle point theorem yeah let's just call it that it's about profit maximization okay it happens at the in the middle point there following x-axis okay so ah excuse me
I will take a picture of this, okay? But uh, not now. Uh, cool man this is cool yeah uh, I'm I'm glad we improved uh, our transactional demand theory yeah it's a good improvement okay so. very good I am compared to you mathematics economics is easier and it's more interesting because we can smell human flesh blood not gore just human flesh we can smell it's more like down to earth kind of economics you know it's not mathematics too high like metaphysical like desert land too much sun too much truth Economics is more like milk and honey, right? My goodness, this is good. Oh. <laughs> it's so mushroomy. Puffball. Oh boy. Oh. This is good mushroom, dude. Oh. I love this vodka. Puffball. It's so cute. Is it lovely? Very cute little puff balls. Oh my goodness, so good. I'm blessed. Okay. Now we can think about the cost, right? And marginal profit and cost marginal profit M okay marginal profit M is equal to uh, what price minus cost right if we per pasta that's why it's called marginal profit it's not total profit okay so what is revenue okay Let's go back to ten dollar world. Price is ten dollar. You sell ten pastas, so at the end of the day, you have one hundred dollar bill. One hundred dollars <throat> in your hand. But uh, per pasta, the cost of making this one pasta is eight dollars. Okay, that includes your auto loan, your car payment your mortgage, your insurance, your rent of this restaurant space, because it's commercial lease, your mortgage, your restaurant, I mean, I mean your, your food, your bills, insurance money, all that. Yeah, that's $8 per pasta. So at the end of the day, you are end up with $100 bill because you made and sold all of 10 pastas you made Okay, so uh, you have one hundred dollar bill, but it's eight dollar per pasta. That's your cost. This your labor cost, your food, which means your food and your bills, your mortgage, car, car loan. Okay, so that's your labor cost. Okay, so the money that you need in order to survive that's your labor cost okay so yeah this eight dollars also include uh cost of making this pasta 
So your labor cost is your the money that you need to survive. Your food, car loan, gas money, your electricity bill, insurance bill, and mortgage bill. Okay, so that's your labor cost. Labor cost is the money that you need to survive. Okay, this labor cost, your salary. Okay, and this eight dollars per pasta also includes the material, food material. You have to buy pasta, you have to cook it, boil it, and you need some. You need to buy some more chicken breast because this is healthy pasta. Okay. Yeah. So this heating, cooking, refrigerator, electricity. Okay, and uh, buying this pasta. It's all included in this eight dollar package. Okay, so you. This eight dollar cost it has many 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 things in there. Some of it is material, food, pasta, chicken breast. Some of it is your labor, which is the money that you need to survive. Your bills, okay, your food, okay. So that's eight dollars. So you but you yeah you can get by by selling this pasta for eight dollars you pay all your bills you buy all the pasta food material ingredients yeah you can get by but uh you wanna put your price higher than the cost why because you want maybe you want to be rich or you want to expand your business okay so you want to make some profit. You don't have to. You can break even. If cost of this pasta is $8 per pasta dish, then you, if you pr put price tag as $8, you can survive. You, you break even. But you want to have some rainy day fund. You don't want to break even. You want, to, you want your savings account to, account to increase. Because what if something happens? Earthquake, tornado, hurricane. Because things happen in life. You you do need to save some. Your savings account better increase a little, even if it's by a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, you put price per pasta is ten dollars, not eight dollars. So you make two dollars profit for every pasta that you sell. Okay. I know this example is not very realistic, but we want to simplify the calculation. Okay, so I come on, restaurants they sell more than ten pasta per day. Come on, just to make it simple. Okay, so all right, let's take a break. I go grab my camera and I take a picture. Take five. Okay, we we'll continue on with this journey in economics. Are you having fun? I am. I hope you do too. I mean, I hope you are too. I want my glasses, so...
So, we're back. What did I do? Uh, I picked up some dog poop. Canine feces. Dog droppings from my backyard. Because my neighbor's dogs, yeah, they love to poop in my yard. I love those dogs, so I guess, I mean, I guess just enjoying interacting with these neighbor's dogs, I guess I pay the price of cleaning after them. Uh, that's fine. This line of manual labor, yeah, it, my friends told me it cleans your soul. So yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it's so cool. So, <clears throat> Um, there's something I wanted to talk about. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you if you have taken economics class like I have, yeah, I got an A. Yeah, just Alfred Marshall transaction, not transaction, but the supply and demand curve. Yeah, I understand what he t he's trying to say, and but I'm kind of rebelling against it now because I know better now. Okay, so it's the wrong theory. So what I want you to do be is have attitude where you don't just accept just because it's mainstream. Okay, so tattoo piercing, sugar fat, obesity, gay marriage, it's mainstream, but you have to question it. It's, it's called in philosophy where we name it as Cartesian, Cartesian inquiry, after, named after Rene Descartes. Does that terminology already exist? I don't know. Let me look it up. Forgot to grab my cell phone. <clears throat> Let me take a picture of this real quick, okay? And then uh, I can web search Cartesian inquiry. So I, I, I'm not sure if the terminology exists already. Very pretty. Cartesian inquiry. Ah, boy. I had this one more puffball feels so yummy but I tasted it that, to me that's enough okay it's just just tasting it so I'm not greedy okay just tasting experiencing the puffball one or two that's to me enough okay Oh, they call it Cartesian doubt. Okay. You have Cartesian inquiry functions. Cartesian topology, whatever. We'll just call it Cartesian, Cartesian inquiry. Okay. You doubt, they call it Cartesian doubt. Okay. You doubt what is, you inquire about, you doubt. Cartesian doubt isn't such a bad terminology, okay? I kind of like it. But we call it Cartesian inquiry, okay? You doubt uh, what's already accepted by the mainstream majoritarian. You, you doubt it, okay? You inquire. So yeah, gay marriage, mainstream, right? But it's wrong. Okay, we proved that, okay? So many times. Yeah, it's wrong, bad, toxic, harmful ideology. Tattoo piercism, same way, okay? Uh, because uh, it's destructive, it's wrong ideology to adopt, okay? Although it's mainstream, you have to doubt it. Is this the right thing to do? Yeah, everybody does that, tattoo piercing, but is it the right thing to do? It's something very mainstream, hip, popular, like, you know, fed, but you have to doubt, okay? Now, this Alfred, my Professor Alfred Marshall's supply demand curve, I mean, it's been there for 100 years, if not more, okay? 
and psychology it's been there more than 200 years right about maybe about but it's wrong they are both wrong okay so the fact that something has been practiced for so very long time for centuries and the fact that it's so universal like it's being told in all the universities in the world it does not mean it's right can all those so many people over hundreds of years be wrong yes and look at slavery look at nazism imperialism okay i look at crimes it's been murder rape it's been practiced for thousands of years does that make it right no like homosexuality has been there for a very long time since the book of genesis doesn't make it right no okay so yeah i the fact that this alfred professor alfred marshall theory has been taught even today for hundreds of years in cambridge mit harvard it does not mean it's right so it, it's just the kind of cartesian spirit of doubting Cartesian inquiry okay so uh, that's a good attitude to have as a scientist as a scholar nowadays nobody do that why because they're afraid we're living in a very spoiled generation you know they want to keep their job right so we understand why they are so afraid but we are not we're humanologists okay so we're they they be done Okay, we are like David versus Goliath kind of. We are very courageous people. All right, so. Okay, now let's throw some more variables here. Okay, cost. Okay, yeah. Marginal profit is price minus cost. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's say cost is eight dollars per pasta. Okay. Your cost of living, you just divide by the number of okay so you you sell about well, 10 pasta per day so and you work every day for the simplicity and then how many pasta per month 300 right 300 pasta per month so what's your revenue thirty thousand dollars okay per year i mean per month 300 pasta you sell per month 10 pasta per day and one pasta ten dollars so you bring in your monthly it's not wage whatever you bring in the money three thousand dollars per month that's your revenue monthly revenue let's say there are 10 months per year okay so three thousand times ten thirty thousand dollars 3k okay thirty thousand dollars per year that's the, your revenue okay thirty thousand dollars per year okay and eighty percent of that only twenty percent of that is your pro your pure profit eighty percent of the thirty thousand dollars it does pay for your salary though all your bills they were paid okay because eight dollars that's the cost it includes your cost of living your bills mortgage rent electricity insurance bill everything okay this including the cost okay so uh 20 percent of 30k what is it It's one fifth of thirty K. Six K. Right? You get to save six thousand dollars a year. Oh that's a good deal. Don't you think? That's the money that you can do whatever with. Six thousand dollars per year. It's like six hundred dollars per month. You can do whatever you want with this money. You can invest, you can save as a rainy day fund. That's what I would rather do. 
Yeah, save as ready to be bond because things can happen, right? Yeah, you need to save. Saving is good, okay? Because things happen, okay? Yeah, you may have insurance, whatever, but hey, what if they refuse to pay you? Sometimes they do, right? Insurance, I didn't have any bad experience with the insurance companies, but I've heard uh, sometimes they don't do the right thing. Okay, but they're human beings too. Okay, so yeah, you can always rely on your insurance. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you need to have some savings because th things happen in life. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean that's all there is. Okay, so. Pure, your pure profit, total profit, yeah, it's just marginal profit times quantity that you sell. It's not ne that necessary that we include that in this graph. Yeah, it'd be like this, right? Your cost, right? Let's do it. Ten, ten, okay, we are doing the scenario, okay, so, all right. So, eight that's the cost ten dollar is the price so you have differential of two two that you make two dollar pure profit per pasta two times ten twenty dollars so per day you make twenty dollars pure profit you can do whatever with it okay so that's your your profit because all your cost of living is all pay, already paid off. Eight dollars per pasta. Okay, so two dollars per pasta. That's your money, your freedom. You can do whatever. Okay, anything legal. Okay. Okay, so that's it. All right. So this this is your profit. Your freedom, your right, okay? That's that. I think we need to dance, okay? Because we have what, 30 minutes left. We did, we had enough fun with economics, okay? So, uh, <coughs> is there more to this? Maybe. But we had enough of this. We did, okay? All right, don't you? I have I, I think I'm, I'm done with this okay so yeah we uh, found some theorem we proved it okay so um, middle of the way okay so profit maximization okay so yeah uh, we call it prospect maximization theorem theorem okay so it's a, you have to increase both labor and production just by a little bit in order to maximize the profit after the increase of your business reputation happens okay so because it has to be middle point okay yeah so you just move a little bit when 20 become 22, yeah, you become, you do from 10 to 11, okay? You increase the price just a little bit, okay? So, profit maximization theorem. Okay. Are we gonna formally prove this? No. I leave it to you. All right. So. Yeah, it, it comes from this middle point theorem. Okay, so profit maximization happened between zero and a in the middle, half of an a. Okay, half of m. Uh, uh, u actually we call it upper limit, right? Yeah. And you find a new curve, right? 
because your business reputation increased, your pasta became more popular, word of mouth, okay? You become more famous, okay? So it parallel shift of what? But should it parallel shift or should it increase in this slope? Uh, most likely it's parallel shift because now that you are more known, you are well known, right? So perhaps even people outside of your own community, your town, maybe they know. They learned about your pasta. Before that, it was always your hometown, the locality that you are doing your business. Only those people knew about your pasta. But uh, as time goes by and you work very hard, it's about quality, your artisan, your artist, you put your soul into this every single pasta that you make. So people will talk about you. And they have friends in neighboring towns. friends and family in neighboring cities. So you are expanding uh, the population, your consumer base. You're expanding because people talk about you, your restaurant, okay? So you become more famous. So the geographically, uh, more people know you now, by now, as time goes by. So it does pay to live long. Okay, so more people will know about you. You're expanding the consumer base, your market share. I mean, the geographically, physically, okay, more people know you, wider region, like neighboring towns, because that's where your customers, friends, and family lives, their relatives, okay? So you're expanding your consumer base geographically, so there will be more rich people who learn about your pasta. So yeah, even if hypothetically your pasta is like twenty dollars of pa per pasta, uh, they will buy it. There will one person will who will buy that. Even if your pasta is hypothetically twenty two dollars, yeah, there will be one person who will buy it now. Not before, but now, yeah, there will be one person because you are more known. So you cover your fame your reputation, your renown covers more geof geographical area and more population. Now, your all the neighboring towns in two-dimensional map, all the surrounding neighboring towns, they know about you. Your reputation, your fame, renown, uh, they spread like, uh, you know, exponential fashion. One person know about your pasta, he tells two people. Now three people know about your pasta. And these two people, yeah, they talk about your pasta to two other people each. So one, two, um, actually one, plus two, plus four, plus eight, is exponential growth. Actually it's more than exponential. Yeah, it is exponential growth because each level is the one, two, four, eight, so per echelon, per stairs, per level, is like one, two, eight, six, one, two, four, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred and twenty-eight. okay, so, okay, it's exponential growth, okay, so yeah, So if you put your soul into your, this pasta, make it healthy and yummy, nutritious, oh yeah, you make a lot of money, okay? Okay. Do I want to dance? I, I, I think I should. I think I, I kind of feel moral obligation to dance. Why? Because it's been a very long time I we did any dancing in camera. Okay. We did martial arts, right? Plenty of times, but I did dancing in my, in right here last night after the recording, okay? But in front of the camera, uh, it's been a long time, so I kind of feel this 
ob moral ethical obligation that we do dancing today. Okay, because it's an education, and I have obligation to teach you how to dance. Although I'm not a good dancer, but we should do it to prevent crimes. Because people need to be happy. If they know how to dance, they'll be happy. Or happy are. Okay. It's not silver bullet, it's not panacea, it's not cure all, but it helps. It's important that uh, everybody know how to dance, how to do martial art. It's important. It may seem very small thing, but they can prevent crime. Dancing, martial art. Proper drinking, proper smoking cigarettes, washing Monday through Friday, bathing or shower, okay? Monday through Friday, fashion, hairstyle, those may, those may seem very uh, trivial and small, but those are the things that can c prevent crime because they will make people happy. So they are not small things. Actually, they are very important things that can prevent crimes. Okay? They can eliminate crimes. You start some from some start with something very small like that. Something I learned from my friends, okay? So yeah, it 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 all starts from something very small. Okay? Like a tree. It used to be a very small seed. Then, just like Jesus said, okay? Again, we come, time and again we go back to Jesus, right? Because that's why I believe in that Jesus is Son of God, indeed. Because um, <clears throat> the, he didn't teach many things, but the things that he taught is very elemental, fundamental things. Like atoms, there are only 100 or 200 or 300 atoms in the universe, right? 103 kinds or 200, 300 artificial world. Yeah, there are a finite amount of these elemental things. Before atom, all you have is neutron, electron, and proton. That's it. All the colors in the universe, you can analyze in uh, four colors. Three, yeah, sure. RGB, red, green, and blue. Or RYB, red, yellow, blue. Okay, that's it. Out of that, by the percentage of three colors, you can generate infinite number of colors. Okay, so Jesus' teaching is very fundamental and elemental, and also elementary too, because it's very easy to understand. Love one another. If your brother sins, rebuke him, correct him. Okay? Yeah, be re reborn change okay yeah like be bigger and better kind of that's how we all interpret that but yeah learn something new that kind of stuff yeah time and again i find myself at uh, this very important a few principle yet yeah, jesus said it all okay so that's why i do believe jesus is indeed son of god I, I do believe that personally. Okay? I, I I believe it. I think he was the, he is the son of God. I do think so. I mean do I know it for sure? No, I cannot be so too sure, right? Because I'm only a human being. But from my best knowledge, best educated guess, I think he is in the son of God. I believe so. So it's a belief. It's not science, it's a religion, okay? All right, we'll, we'll take a break, okay? And then we'll do some dancing, okay? So, because it's been a long time since we did dancing on camera, okay? Off camera, yeah, I did. Off the record, yeah, last time, okay? But on record, this camera, you know, it's been a while, so. After break, we'll do some dancing, okay? Yeah, let's get physical, all right? So, 
Yeah. It's not like we're in a party mood I and mean, so many people die in this shooting, right? But it's the dancing that can eliminate crimes in the future, okay? So we are not in the mood of celebration, no, we are not partying, no, we are trying to prevent crimes by dancing. And I'm not being sarcastic, I'm not making fun of, making it light of all the victims and their families, no. I'm serious about this, I'm not joking. It's dancing that prevents crime, okay? If people, everybody knows how to dance, they will be happy and they will not need to commit crimes, okay? I'm serious. I'm not I'm not kidding. Okay? All right. We'll be back.
Okay, we'll do some dancing, but uh, we'll do some bone dancing, okay? It's like you feel your bone, you're dancing with your bone, okay? So, but I was inspired by this Teddy Boys, it's Korean classic, K pop classic. They are not very well known in other countries. You have what? PSI, Psy, PSY, Psy guy. Well, Gangnam style, okay, that's more well known to other countries than Teji Boys. Uh, Psy, I, I, I told you many times, I know that guy, okay. He, he knows me, I mean, we knew each other because we grew up in the same town, Tampo, okay, so. South of the river, that's it. Kang means river, Nam means south. South of the river, okay, so. Yeah, Han River in the, just like Sen River. I forgot how to say river in French. Yeah, in Paris, Sen River. Han River is a big river, it's bigger than Sen River, okay, so it's a big river in the middle of Seoul, uh, Seoul, South Korea, okay, there's North of the river, that's where downtown is, the financial district. South of the river is more like red danger. Okay. At least it's how it was back then, how it was back then, when I grew up. Nowadays, yeah, south of the river, it has its own financial district. Because south Korea is changing so fast. Okay. So the place I grew up, as a child in Seoul, South Korea, it's, it's uh, called Pampo. It's like green light, uh, I mean green, green belt. Okay, this where this probably the only place in Seoul, South Korea, where trees are taller than apartment buildings. Still, okay, and I hope they don't change that characteristic. I hope they don't cut down those trees. I'm a tree hugger. I'm very liberal in this sense. I love trees. I don't even cut my grasses, not because I'm lazy. I look at all these edible plants, all, all this. It's from my backyard. I just let them grow. <laughs> How many different kinds of edible berries do I have in my backyard? Highbush cranberry, uh, watermelon berry, rose hips, bunch berries. I think and possibly raspberries or red currant but not in my in my backyard is not very many of them okay but an edible mushroom like this puffball okay so and edible plants like a plantain clover dandelion grass some edible grass okay i have them all Yeah, the Psy guy, yeah, yeah, we talked a couple of times, we are acquaintances, we are, because he's one year older than me, okay, so he has his whole own social hub, and I had mine, so, uh, different social circle, because he's one year older than me, okay, but we did, he's, I think he's a cool guy, he's a nice guy, yeah, he's cool, he's very entertaining, good dancer, okay, Back, I'm talking about like back in elementary school, middle school days. Okay, so we did go to the same elementary school and middle school. High school, I think he went to different high school. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, so yeah, we're in a kind of small community, Pampo. Okay, so uh, he, he's cool. Okay, so he's Gangnam style. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that music or his lyrics or his dancing style. I'm not a huge fan. Okay, but I appreciate his contribution because basically he let the world know how beautiful Korean women can be. Okay, but because his music video, yeah, beautiful Korean ladies. But I've seen better though, <laughs> Korean girls. I've seen more beautiful Korean girls than the women in that music video. Okay, because I lived in Seoul, South Korea more than uh, shy of two decades, right? 18 years, about. Yeah, I've seen better. Korea, South Korean girls, okay.
I cannot speak for North Korea because I'm, I've never been there. Okay, so I, I'm sure they're beautiful North Korean girls. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have some beautiful Chinese girls, Japanese girls. Okay. Yeah. I have. I've never been to China though, but I've seen Chinese girls who are very, 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 very beautiful. Okay. Japanese girls, yeah, I've seen very, very, very many beautiful Japanese ladies I have. Korea, yeah, of course, yeah, South Korea, I've seen many, 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 so many beautiful Korea, South Korean ladies, many. My mom and her friends, uh, that's just some of them. Okay, my aunts, my grandmothers. Oh, they're all beautiful. But yeah, I've seen so many beautiful, extremely beautiful, South Korean ladies. I have. We have ten minutes left. Okay, so let's do some dancing. Yeah, I'm trying to make cues. Bone dancing. Yeah, it's a Teji boys. Okay, so come back home. Okay. It's kind of this, I don't know, the Beatles sang Get Back. Fantastic song, by the way. Amazing song. And Teddy Boy's Come Back Home is it's about song about Runaway Child. Because it's like, yeah, they did this, uh, they, this Soteji, the group leader, the songwriter, the two other guys, they are choreographer, fantastic dancers. Choreographers, Mr. Soteji, he's a good dancer too. Okay, but he's most mostly like instrumental s singer, instruments, songwriting. That's his Soteji, Mr. Soteji. And uh, yeah, he he learned from American music, like Michael Jackson or Insane in the Membrane. Who's that? Kind of Puerto Rican kind of. I forgot their name. Okay, insane in the membrane. You know, yeah. He to come back home is kind of like uh, influenced by that American music, insane in the membrane. Okay, so and Mr. Soteji he called it gangster rap. Okay, but that's not official. Nomenclature in American hip hop. So, and uh, it, it was fantastic music. Yeah. Uh, he did learn from American recording artists, like Insane in the Membrane, that band. I forgot their name. Okay. I used to know. It's in my playlist, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he did learn a lot from American music. He got influenced by or educated by American musicians uh, because he's, I guess, he kind of studied on his own. But the dancing, two his two backup dancers, they are not backup dancers. They are they sing too. Okay, so th three bo three man group, Teji boys, Soteji and boys. Okay, Yang Hyun Seok, Lee Juno, Soteji. Okay, the soup. two people. They are they are choreographers, dance professional dancers. Okay, so uh, I, I, it blow my mind away. After this recording, probably I'll do some dancing solo here. After the off the record, okay, but let's do it on record because Jesus said share it with your brothers and sisters, okay. He just said brothers, but yeah, well, I don't think Jesus was a sexist. Because... So okay, bone dancing, okay, yeah, you know, I do this for you because I'd rather dance alone, off record, off the record because. I kind of make me self-conscious, okay? So, Bone Dancing. I was inspired by this Ted Boy's Come Back Home. It's like, yeah, you, you feel the, your bone, you know? Like, yeah, it's like Bone Dancing, you know? And also, this commercial, you know, all these retail stores, they have this this thing, right? This, this yeah, this uh, kind of like, what? Scarecrow kind of air glow. I don't know what the name of that thing is, but yeah. Oh, oh. 
Very cool, okay. Yeah, bone dancing, okay. Oh, oh, you know, oh. You know, I'm not moving too much. I'm not like rotating or anything, okay. Ooh. Yeah, but yeah, bone dancing. Like, oh. Oh. You know, so that's that, okay, so. I was kind of in inspired by that. Come back home. Especially Mr. Yang Hyunso, okay. Mr. Lee Juno, Lee Juno. Yeah, in American transliteration, you call it Lee, right? But it's in Korean pronunciation, it's E. Okay, so Mr. E. Juno. Uh, so they, the group disbanded and then um, they went their ways and Mr. Yang hyun and Mr. E. Lee Juno, they all, both of them made their own band as producers, like behind the scene. Uh, the band that Mr. Yang hyun made, he made at least two bands. The first one wasn't very successful, but second one, uh, maybe the third one, I don't know, but later on, they became very internationally successful. Okay, Mr. Yang hyun okay. Mr. Lee Juno, he made this band called uh, Young Turks Club. That's one of my favorites of all time, okay? Because the choreography, the songs, oh, amazing, okay? I have it in my playlist. But Mr. Yang Hyun is a very talented man. He, so the second or third band that he formed as a producer, it, it became international sensation, okay? At least in Asia. Also some in America too, okay? So I forgot the name because his band, I'm not a huge fan of. But this, this Mr. E, Lee Juno, his band, Young Turks Club, I'm a huge fan, okay? It's a, one of the most unknown Korean K-pop classic, like Young Turks Club, like Turkey, Turks, okay? And yeah, I, I, I have it in my playlist and I'm a huge fan, okay? So, Mr. Yang hyun -so is very tall, he's very light-skinned kind of guy, tall. Mr. Lee Juno is very dark-skinned, Korean. So yeah, Korean, Asian, South Korean, they're lighter, skin colored people and darker skin colored people again. Mr. Lizuno is very dark skinned cut person. Mr. Soteji is kinda of in the middle. Okay, so they're all fantastic dancers. Very physical, you know, dance oh okay. They're good. We have like two minutes left, okay, so so yeah, yeah, uh, people need to learn to dance, learn to martial art, learn mathematics, economics, knowledge, foreign languages. That's the only way you can be happy, okay? Exercise, diet, it's about labor, work. And there's no other way, okay? If everybody does this, then there will be no more crime, okay? So, can it happen? Yes, I believe so. <clears throat> Why? We have main, we have media, internet. So if I'm the president in 2020 in November, I, I, if I'm elected there, then, if I'm the president in 2021 January, yeah, then the Holy Spirit in me will flow through the mainstream media all the way to the world. Okay, so that's why I'm running for president. I want to propagate this Holy Spirit in me. I want to teach what I have learned in my life. Good knowledge, dancing, martial art, mathematics, whatever. And then the world can be saved. Okay? So that's what I want and that's what I pray to God. Yeah, yeah give me the presidency. I save the world for you. I bring people to you, God. Yeah, give me the presidency, okay? So then I make it all happen, okay? So. All right, thank you. Okay, so I gotta dance, okay? Off the record, okay? Thank you. Bye.